angles between planes are more difficult 3D problems. Now we have to sort of think about this. If we've got a straight wall here and it meets the ground, then we have a right angle triangle and of course the line's going to give us a greater straight slope and the angle will give us a greater slope as well. But if we move our wall in okay, at a different angle, then we have to be able to work out these angles or whatever they ask us. So we've got to picture this wall sort of moving. For this cuboid, find the angle between A, C, dash. So I'll just draw a line from A to C dash. And the plane A, B, B dash, A dash. So that plane there is actually the ground. And we've got A to C dash. So let's just think that we're showing a line down here. And A to C dash is going to cast a shadow there. So then we can have our little right angle triangle. And we can work out the angle between the red and the green line. So we need to find the distance from A to B dash. Of course, that's just a right angle triangle. So I'm going to go A to B dash. That is a right angle triangle in there. And that means I have to go from A to B and then B to B dash, which is 3A and 3A. So the distance from A to B dash squared or equal 3A squared is 9A plus 9A. So we've got 18 squared and therefore that's a b dash squared and therefore a b dash is the square root of 18 which is the square root of 9 which is 3 square root of a is a and i've still got a square root of 2 there so that's a b dash and then to work out that angle there we have again i'll just quickly draw up a right angle triangle we're going to go from a to c dash and down to B. So we have an A there. We've just worked this one out. 3A the square root of 2. And we want the angle between those two. So that is between A, C, A and A, B. So it's that angle there. So we've got 10 of theta is a divided by 3a the square root of 2 the a's cancel so we've got tan of theta equals 1 over 3 the square root of 2 and therefore inverse tan to find that angle and that angle ends up being 13.26 degrees 13.26 degrees part b Part B is slightly hard. It says the angle between the planes, and I'll do this in red and yellow, between the planes A, C, and D dash. A, C, and D dash. So we've got that plane there, right? A, C, D dash. And I'll do it in purple. And D, C, D dash. So where are those two planes? So one's flat up the top, and the other one comes in at an angle. Okay, so probably the best thing to do here is to say, right, let's mark this line in the middle and we'll call it M because that's the common line between the two. And then we can work out the distance from D dash to M. So D dash to M is just a half D dash to C and D dash to C is the same as A to B dash which we worked out, 3a square root of 2. So I've got a half times 3a the square root of 2. So I've already got that now. And I want the angle between those two planes. Okay, so between those two planes. So if I draw up a line, sorry, a right angle triangle, I should say. Not do it again. There we go, that's my d. There is my A, and this is going to be my midpoint, and that's the angle between them. Now that comes out at a right angle. So I better not call it that, I'll call it alpha, just to change the name of it. Okay, so I've got tan of alpha is D to A is A, and A to M, we've just worked out, D to M dash, sorry, we've just worked out there. That is 
3a the square root of 2 a half. So when I rearrange that one and work it all out, I end up getting the square root of 2 over 3, and therefore alpha, when I take tan of it, ends up being 25.24 degrees. Example 20. We've got these three points on this plane, A, B, C, that gives us this thing. It also tells us that tan alpha, there's our alpha, is 1 on and 13. Beta, there's our beta there, 1, I've still got that 1, and that's 15. And gamma is 1 and 20. Now that's really good, even if I take this right angle here, there's no way I'm going to work out this height, because it says to work out the height of the tower, because that tells me 1, which is not really 1. We've got to sort of put these all together. Okay, so we'll say let... We don't know what the height is that asks us to find the height so, height, so we'll say let h equal height of the tower, which is from, of course, from p to q. Okay, so now this becomes 13h, 15h, and 20h. So I'm just going to draw that bottom again, that just that base, because remember they're all a base. So there's my q there. There's one, and there's the other. Don't worry if it's, you know correctly spaced or not, that's 70 metres, that's 35 metres, this is 13H, that's 15H, and that's 20H. Now we'll better put an angle in here, so I'll put the angle in there, that's not a problem. Now considering this first triangle here, we can use cosine rule to work out that. So I've got cos, theta or equal 70 squared plus 15h all squared minus 13h all squared divided by 2 times 70 times 15. At the same time I'm going to be looking at this triangle over here. Now, because I've got an obtuse, remember for an obtuse you need the really negative cos of theta. So that means we've got cos of 180 minus theta. And therefore we're going to have 35 squared plus 15h all squared minus 20h all squared divided by 2 times 35 times 15h. Now these two need to be equal to each other. We couldn't find h any other way. But if we make them equal to each other, then we should be able to find h. So, therefore, I get 70 squared plus 15h all squared minus 13h all squared divided by 2 times 70 times 15 should equal, because remember we're in the same plane, 35 squared plus 15h all squared minus 35 squared, oops. Divided by, oh, that's not 35, that's 20h. 20h all squared divided by 2 times 35 times 15h. Now when we work all this out, it should come to 49, I'm only going to copy this out of the book, plus 56h squared equals 275h squared minus 1225. And we're going to get 7350 equals 294H squared. So H should equal 5. And that's 5 metres because it was in metres. 21. <clears throat> it says a sphere rests on the top of a vertical cylinder which is open at the top. 
The inside of the diameter of the cylinder is 8 cm. The sphere is 8 cm above the top of the cylinder. Find the length of the sphere. So we have a vertical cylinder. So I'm just going to quickly draw that. Try and draw it as best as I can. There it is there. And it says that it's 8 cm. So that in there is 8 cm. I'll call this a to B. I don't think we need the bottom part. Then we've got, which I'll do in red, another sphere. Press on the top of the cylinder. That's, but the sphere projects 8 cm above the top. So 8 cm above the top. So from the top to the top of the sphere is going to be 8 cm. Okay. So I'm going to try and draw a circle here, sphere. Right, and that goes from there to there, and that's my center over there. Find the radius of the sphere. So I've got that line. I know I can get a little right angle. That's going to be there. That's going to be my radius anyway from 0 to B there. I'll call this point C here. That most likely would be the midpoint because of the origin. So I've got O to C. O to C is the 8 centimeters from there to there, all right, the whole thing minus the, ra the radius. So 8 minus the radius. B to C will equal 4, because if that's 8, then it's 4. And O to B is my radius, so I've already got that down. Therefore, we've got Pythagoras' theorem. We've got 8 minus R all squared using this triangle plus 4 squared equals r squared 64 minus 16r plus r squared plus my oops 4 squared is 16 equals r squared rearranging this I get 16r equals equals just wanna draw it in equals 80, 16R equals 80, and therefore R will equal 5 centimetres. Example 22. A box contains two standard golf balls that fit snugly inside the box. The box is 85 metres long. What percentage of the box in space inside the box is air? So I'll draw my box. I only draw a side view here. I won't worry about it. There we go there. We've got one ball, which of course you would assume that it's touching, and the other ball, which of course you would assume is touching as well. And it does say that the box is 85 mils in length. Okay, we can do that. Of course, if you're looking at it from the side, you're only going to see one ball from this side, but remember it is a box, so it's got, you know, a whole area like that. So the best thing to do is we say let, because we haven't got a lot of information, R millimetres, we're going to use millimetres because of that, and let R millimetres be radius of golf ball. Well, that means I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 4R. So I've got 4R equals 85. And therefore, R will equal 85 divided by 4, which is 21.25. So this box dimension would be 21.25, 21.25, 85, okay? Oh, that's the radius. Sorry, no, we can't do that's the radius. So this box will be 20.42. So therefore, a bit of right over here, dimensions. Box will equal 85 mils, and then the length is 42.5, double that because that's the radius, and of course we want the diameter, and again 42.5. So the volume of the box is the area of its base, which is that part there, because that's where we get the cross section, so it will be 40. 2.5 squared times its height, 85. I'm just going to leave that like that now. The volume of the golf balls. Okay, volume of the golf balls will be 2 times 
Now remember it's four thirds times pi times radius, which is 21.25 cubed, two because there's two golf balls. So we've got eight over three pi times 21.25 cubed. I'll leave it like that. The percentage of air left is what the golf balls are taking, right? So the whole box minus the golf balls is what's E is left divided by the um, volume of the box. So first of all, we've got 42. I'm going to try and squeeze it in here. 0.5 squared, if it writes it, times 85 is the volume of the box. Take away the volume of the golf balls, 8 thirds pi times 21.25 cubed and that gives us how much air is left in the box divided by the volume of the box to turn it into a percentage volume of the box times 85 and then of course it's got to be times by 100 so when I I'll just put times by 100 so I don't forget because I've run out of room when I work all that out I end up getting 47.6% and that's to one decimal place.